Hey everyone, how are you all doing? So the story missions have finally arrived and I'm going to be reviewing the entire thing. Let's do it. So for those of you that don't know the lore so far, I'm going to give you a brief explanation to give these story missions some context. Basically, you take iRobot, then you take the Avengers, bam, that's Overwatch. So the first mission begins with a cutscene where you see Lucio flipping and wall riding, fighting off Null Sector all by himself. At this point in the story, Lucio isn't a part of the Overwatch team, he's just a fanboy. It kind of reminds me of when you're in a match versus a really good Lucio on the enemy team and he's zooming about baiting your backline. Anyway, there's too many Omnics and Lucio's like, time to amp it up. I'm just kidding, he looks hopeless. It's all good though because Ryan drops in like he's playing Apex Legends, squashes a pack of Omnics and then Brig lands two, Goomba stomping one of them. Tracer, Winston, Genji, Mercy and Mei all show up as well and they all beat the crap out of the Omnics in their own way and then they start chatting. The dialogue is kind of cheesy but we can let it slide because the rest of the dialogue is really solid. Go! How's Overwatch enjoyed our city? It's beautiful! Except for all the killer robots! Oh, I know, right? No one likes uninvited guests. <laughs> yeah! So this fight scene ends with Ryan pulling off a 5k shatter and then Lucio explains that they should retreat because more robots are coming. And he invites them to his place. The animation and the voice acting is really good. I'm really happy with it. It's super convincing and it's just cool seeing the characters brought to life with the in-game graphics like this. This is my place. We should be safe here for the moment. So we end up at Lucio's pad where the crew come up with a plan. Lucio says there's a big ship pumping out an endless supply of robots, and then Ryan comes up with a pretty bronze tier game plan. So we fly up there, smash through anything that gets in our way, and put them out of business. Is that too serious? As he explains further though, it turns out to be a good plan because then they set off to actually fly up to the ship. So this is when the gameplay starts, right? I picked Lucio and I'm really glad I did. You'll see why in a bit. The story missions are match made, so you'll usually play with other online players, but I ended up with bots because I was on a test server. So when I spawned into Lucio's pad, I had to look around. You know, there's trophies, skating gear. There's some pretty funny pictures on the wall. There's some food in the kitchen and bot Ryan is just stomping all over the counters. Lucio Lucio has a sound room with instruments and stuff and yeah it's pretty cool seeing Lucio's place. So we leave and straight away you're fighting the Omnics and the combat feels exactly like the old Overwatch 1 event missions. The enemy AI is simple and not very interactive but overall it's still kind of fun just hopping around the map using your hero's abilities. So yeah you kill the robots, you go outside, you kill some more robots and the map is pretty animated actually. There's like large ships flying over your head, you can see these little drop ships landing, uh, you can see the city burning in the background. Parts of the buildings explode and stuff but I didn't really see it because I was just too busy hopping about. The characters also talk to one another then they kind of guide you through the mission and that's pretty cool. What is that thing? But here is why it was a good idea to pick Lucio right? You know the Omnics? A dangerous threat? Bro I just booped them off the map. <laughs> Even Ryan was having a go. We've got during this part of the mission, there's three power sources around the map that you have to destroy. And after that, you head to the beach. Beach, let's go get away. They say. So we get to the beach where Brigitte is gonna pick us up in a ship. You fight more robots and then a larger robot lands. Lucio doesn't care though, like the robots cannot handle these sound waves. So after that, Brig lands, the crew hop in and we fly up to the large Omnic ship. Um, good to see you, Lucio. Oh, sorry, everyone. You're a um, man. Uh, what are you doing? Right, Brigitte. Once you're on the ship, guess what? You're fighting more robots. And I remember being like, where the heck is my crew? And I turn around and they're hiding in the corner. Ryan is like, yo, all you Lucio, we're just chilling. Anyway, there's one path through the ship and I wanted to see what would happen if I just stood in front of the Omnics. They'll all be destroyed when we bring down the ship. I got owned. I didn't actually realize what happened at the time, but it turns out May spawned on me in her ice block and it just launched me across the map. Anyway, some flying robots turn up and I'm like, damn, I can't boop them off the map now. Just kidding, I booped them off. Eventually, you reach the final room where there's a ball of energy sat in the middle and a boss spawns in like a transformer. His name is Omnicmus Prime. 
Actually, I don't know his name, but the team blasts the boss and he puts a shield around himself. Basically, he has his own bat lamp. So now you have to get this dumb idiot to charge into the energy ball in the middle, which destroys his shield and then you finish him off. The characters are constantly telling you exactly what to do, and even though it's simple, I think they should just allow you to figure it out for yourself. It's burning some kind of force field! Maybe we can make a charge into the relay! It's force field is back! Quick! Make a charge into the relay! It's invincible again! Lord, it takes us a relay! Oh, let's break it! Dang! Don't think he's getting back up. Once the boss is down, you shoot the energy ball, blow it up, and then it's time to escape. And I swear the Halo music started playing in my head here, or like Indiana Jones. It's one of those scenes where there's a time limit and you sprint to the exit, everything is exploding, and it gives you three entire minutes here, but I got out in 30 seconds because I was on Lucio. Like there was absolutely no rush. So you jump through this window and the next cutscene starts. Briggs on her aircraft hovering outside the ship, and she's like, hey yo, you gotta jump guys. So so Tracer blinks on, Echo flies on, Winston and Genji jump on. Like Genji wasn't gonna make it, even with his dash. Winston had to grab him and chuck him in. Lucio plays the hero by staying back for absolutely no reason, and then Ryan and May get on. And it's kind of epic actually. Like there's some creative ideas with the hero abilities. Ryan rockets off and grabs May like an absolute chad. May builds an ice ramp, and then Ryan launches up it into the craft. So now there's one left, it's Lucio. So he's doing his parkour stuff again and then he does the leap of faith. Guys, I can't believe Lucio is dead. I can't believe it. I'm just kidding. Lucio falls to his death, but then Brig uses her whip shot to catch him, and then the Omnic ship blows up, no one died, mission success. The scene ends with Lucio getting invited to the Overwatch team, and then Lucio says his spawn phrase, which is quite iconic to me. You know, I've been hearing this phrase in the game since it came out six or seven years ago. You know, if you're looking to stop Null Sector, I'd really like to help. No. Welcome aboard. Oh, look at this team. <laughs> We're gonna do great. It's not over yet though. The crew land in Gibraltar, one of Overwatch's headquarters, and Lucio is given a speech kissing all their asses, basically. It's kind of cute though. The great Reinhardt Wilhelm. Oh, please don't get him started. <laughs> so Lucio asks where everyone else is, and apparently none of the other Overwatch heroes wanted to help. But then BAM! Cassidy, Farah, Bap, Zarya, and Diva have been waiting for them. So they all act how you would expect them. Cassidy is animated with his calm confidence. Farah is kind of cool and cheerful. Diva is hyper and cocky. Zarya is flexing and eager, and Bap is like the adult looking after all the children. Yes, she gets it! Sounds like I'm gonna be patching you two up the most. All the heroes group up in a circle, and Winston explains that there's a bazillion evil Omnix now, and that they need to come up with a tactical plan to beat them. And then it ends with Cassidy saying, if we're gonna pull this off, there's one more person we need. And I honestly had no idea who he was talking about, but you find out in the next mission. If we're gonna pull this off, there's still one more person we need. So on to mission two. This is called Liberation, and the objective is to locate a former Overwatch agent. So now we find out who Cassidy was talking about. So the cutscene starts. Null Sector are invading Toronto, Canada. There's civilians freaking out trying to escape, but they run right into a baddie Omnic, and it grabs one of the goody Omnics. And his mates start copying Sigma here by chucking rocks, right? <laughs> then one of the large Omnics shows up, and it's over. Just kidding. Dude gets one shot. And we know who it is because when this hero got released, you'd be getting one shot every game all day. It's Sojourn. So Sojourn runs in like an absolute badass, uses her kit, the slide, the railgun, throws in a quick melee for 30 damage, you know, uses the right click on the last robot, and it's awesome. Like, I'm really happy with the quality of these cutscenes. This robot with the mustache is like, whoa, just in the omnic of time. Nah, he didn't actually say that, but it would have been funny. I'll give you points for courage, but it takes more than bricks to stop these things. So Sojourn is pretty down to earth and realistic. She's like a no bullshit type character, and I like that. Cassie ends up showing up, and you see Sojourn is ready to alt him, but they're besties, kinda. I mean, they have a love-hate relationship. Huh. As if I didn't have enough problems already. 
<laughs> anyway, the rest of the crew show up and Sojourn is delighted and she gives Winston a big hug. And I'm going to keep saying this, but the animation is just super convincing and it actually got me into the lore, which I honestly didn't even care about before. So Sojourn explains that Null Sector have taken over the city and they're rounding up all the civilian Omnics. So I guess Null Sector are just killing the humans, right? We don't actually see that, but you don't see any humans during the gameplay. So where are they? The game is extremely PG. I, I do wish they'd gone in with some more adult themes, but it is what it is. So as they're talking, an explosion goes off in the distance and they run towards it to help. All the music slaps during these scenes, by the way. Good stuff. So this is when the gameplay starts. Guess who I picked? Lucio. I wanted to boop Null Sector off the map again. You end up at a dock where a ferry is arriving to pick up civilians and all you have to do is defend the ferry. When the ferry arrived, I tried to wall ride it, but it didn't work out. We'll keep them off you, Captain. Down. It's pretty simple. You kill the Omnics and then the groups of civilian Omnics run to the ferry. Bro, I tried to boot them into the water. Expect the worst and you're never disappointed. Eventually, larger Omnics spawn and the ferry can be overwhelmed, but Lucio is OP in story mode. I'm telling you. This has been too simple. By the way, I did this mission with Cassidy too and Winston was acting up big time. Let me show you. Soldier, what was that? Stalker, I fought a few of them since this started. Once you wipe out all the enemies, the ferry sails off and you get a call from a civilian Omnic called Claire. She says there's more survivors and that she needs help. So you go off to find her. By the way, Tracer calls Sojourn, Sojo. I just wanted to point that out. Good to see you, Tracer. Can you keep an eye on that ferry? Once you reach this area, there's a special enemy called a stalker and it has a grabbing mechanic where it beams you in and if you don't kill it or stun it in time, you get down. I would imagine this could be quite fun if you're playing with real players on a harder difficulty. So you clear the area and you arrive at King Street Station where Claire is and there's a bunch of null sectors. So you blast them all. And once you've cleared the station, you meet up with Claire and she explains that there's more civilians in the subway and wants to lead you to where they are. Bro, I was grinding this rail like a pro. So you enter the subway and you grab a ride on this train uh, and it's pretty cool actually. And I'm kind of interested to see where the survivors are and what it's about, right? So once you arrive at the next stop, a civilian is freaking out trying to get in, but he ends up getting gobbled by this squid omnic. Reminds me of Metroid. This entire scene was kind of well done actually, but um, to be honest, we could have easily broken the glass and saved him. I guess the team forgot that we had weapons. So we blow up the squid and it turns out the civilian wasn't killed, but put into some sleeping state. So we run through the subway station system and there's another fight. You basically have to keep the squid omnics off of Claire while they try and gobble her up. And during this fight, Sojourn explains that the omnics are shooting at them, but not at Claire. So that confirms that Null Sector want to kill the humans and gather the omnics, I guess. When the enemies were making their entrance, I was just booping them back to spawn. You can partially destroy the enemies, but it just doesn't make them any more interesting. I mean, look at him. It's just... What? Once you've cleared the Omnics, you carry on and there's a room with some gaps that you have to jump. No problem. I'm a good jumper. Sojourn's a good jumper, eh? Bro, I'm on Lucio. I've got the best jumps in the game. So eventually you find the civilians, but it's too late. They've all been gobbled up by the squids. And again, they're not dead. They're just sleeping with weird contraptions on their head. It turns out there's one survivor though. His name is Reggie and he's your typical only looking out for himself type character. And it's kind of comedic. Hey, whoa. Don't shoot! Of course you survived, Reggie. Were you hiding? So as you try to exit the subway, there's another fight where you have to protect both Reggie and Claire from the squid omnics. And there's also these little flying omnics too. Once you've cleared this section, the crew head outside, fight more robots. And I remember Claire asking for weapons. You know, I think she plays Overwatch 2 in Valorant. Should Reggie and I have guns too? You know how to use one? I play a lot of shooting games. But at this point, the atmosphere is pretty cool. You know, Tracer is flying an aircraft overhead. The heroes are all talking to each other constantly. And the weather effects are very cool. And it's good. I liked it. Anyway, at the end of the mission, Tracer picks you up in an aircraft and another cutscene starts. And this is where it gets deep, yo. Let's go before we all die. What are you doing out there? 
The entire squad escape and land on a nearby ship. And when they're exiting the aircraft, you can see that Claire and Reggie are injured. And I don't see why they don't just plug them into the mains and charge them up, you know? This scene is about the humanity of the robots. All the heroes care for these robot civilians because they're considered alive beings. However, Reinhardt just sees them as machines. And I do too. Like, I've always found it difficult to care about robot characters unless there's a really good backstory. Um, like Wally, -E, for example. Bastion's short animation was really good too, actually. It's just hard to relate to a robot character like I could a human character. In this scene, I think they should have included some civilian humans to magnify the seriousness of the robot invasion. I don't know, I just don't care about Claire or Reggie yet. I mean, maybe down the line after some episodes, I'll be upset when Reggie dies or something. Anyway, Winston is trying to get Surgeon back in the Overwatch team, but she's like, nah, bruh, I preferred Overwatch 1 6v6. But in the end, she does agree to help. And here is what I mean about Reinhardt. He expresses his opinion. Wait! Just because you have a hammer doesn't make every problem a nail. But... Isn't he just a machine? He's not just a machine. The cutscene ends with them inspecting one of the shutdown civilian Omnics, and they want to figure out how to remove the device from his head to potentially save them. And Brig has an idea. Guess which hero could fix the robots? That's right, it's Tobjorn. Just one donk with his hammer and they'll be fine, I'm sure. So that's the end of mission two. On to mission three. This is called Ironclad. This is where you meet up with the one and only handsome mofo, Tobjorn. The cutscene starts at Tobjorn's workstation in Gothenburg, and it's kind of like a Disney film, actually setting the scene with cheerful music as Torb is giggling in the background. <laughs> Torb is quite a kind, cheerful, family oriented character, and I keep saying it, but I just really enjoyed watching these characters brought to life like this. Like, I've been playing Overwatch for so long, and just seeing the characters animated in game like this, I really like it. He's taking a look at the robot, explaining that the Omnic is alive, but its memory is wiped. Torbjorn's pretty upset, and Ryan is kind of less understanding about the whole situation, you know? I kind of like this dynamic. He's still alive, but. <sighs> It's like the essence of who he is is gone. Can't you just restore it from a backup or something? <laughs> Really, Uncle? So Bastion's bird lands on Ryan's coffee, but Ryan doesn't know anything about Bastion yet. He only knows these Omnic models as one of the battle ones that attack the cities. He doesn't know that Bastion is actually friendly. They found us! Get behind me! Torb explains this, but Ryan is like, nah, that's bullshit, and they have an argument. There's some really good character building here, and I like it. Look, <laughs> Bastion won't hurt you. What? Bastion? It's not a pet! It's a killing machine! All of a sudden, guess what? Null Sector are invading, and they get ready to fight, and this is when the gameplay starts. I picked Bastion here because he's OP when there's no shields, you know? So you spawn in Torbjorn's workshop, and there's a bunch of photos around, a cat mug. It's kind of cute. There's some pretty funny dialogue, too. No, no. I'm much bigger than I used to be. Especially around the midriff. <laughs> the first part of the mission involves you escorting these magma cores to one of Torbjorn's giant turrets. It's basically like a payload map, only you're fighting off Null Sector instead of a five stack of sweaty nerds. So Brig is explaining what to do, but I'm just too busy testing nade jumps, I don't know. So you escort these cores, you kill stuff, you stop by a sausage shop, and then you arrive at the giant turret. The first turret is just past the sausage shop! Imagine Torb had one of these turrets in an actual match. Just imagine it. The giant turret nukes one of the Null Sector aircraft and destroys it, and the gameplay continues to be pretty animated, um, but it's still very simple. Um, at one point, I was trying to jump to a boat to take a look at the view, but it wasn't happening. Anyway, you deploy the second magma core and activate the second turret to shoot another ship, but then a massive Omnic lands, and this is called a Titan. It's a Titan! Get down! Wrist-mounted artillery! Hell siege missile launchers! Those weapons are immense! So now you have to escort one last core to the last turret so that you can try and blow up this Titan. And then there's another fight here. It's a little bit more hectic. There's a lot more enemies and the Titan is blasting you with missiles. Bastion don't care though. He's on another level. One of the flying robots has an EMP as well. So like we're getting hacked in game by Sombra and then you're getting hacked in the story missions by robots. It just never ends. Finally, you spawn the third turret, but it only tickles the Titan and then gets obliterated. Mission failed. I did play this mission with Torbjorn 2 and it was kind of funny placing his turrets on the cores because they would spin like this. 
It's all good though, because Torb has one last idea, which is to use his new mega cannon prototype turret. They lure the Titan to the workshop, you kind of just make a circle, right? And you have to defend it while the cannon gets charged. Torb starts repairing some of his turrets for you to place around the room, and that's kind of cool. Some of the turrets freeze enemies and some of them boop. Like imagine you had this in game. It'd be super fun. Like bring the boop turret into PvP. Eventually, the Omnix attack the dock, and you continue to defend the cannon. I did get grabbed by a stalker here, but I just straight up used my ultimate on myself, and it actually worked. <laughs> Finally, the cannon is ready, you activate it, and there's a mini cutscene of it obliterating the Titan. Oh no! No, 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 no! And then there's the final cutscene of this mission accompanied by Victorious music. So Ryan jumps in, gives Bastion a friendly smack. It looks like he trusts him after me playing Bastion, literally killing 99% of the Omnics during the mission. And then he asks Torb to join the Overwatch team again. Ryan gives a really good convincing speech, but Torb is not into it. He's like, listen, bro, I gotta stay here and look after my family. We have a lot of work to do out there. <laughs> no, not me. I have responsibilities here. What? Yeah, Torb has to stay home and look after his children. And by children, I mean his turrets. Torbjorn then looks to Brig and expresses how awesome she is, and Ryan agrees. Did any of you play Brig during her release five years ago? She was insane. The most broken hero by far. My life of a Brig main video went super hard. Anyway, the cutscene ends with Bastion and the bird joining the Overwatch team, and that's the end of the mission entirely. But there is an extra cutscene that sets up the story for future missions. I'm not going to talk about this one because I've been talking for too long now, but it's another really good scene, and it might actually be the best cutscene of all of them. But it's about Zen and Ramatra, and how Widow killed one of their leaders, and then Widow finds Zen, and yeah, it's good. So that's the end of the season 6 story content, and I have to say, the cutscenes were great, and the missions felt alive and cinematic, but I do think the enemies could be a bit more interactive, maybe they could talk, maybe they could have some more mechanics to make fighting them a bit more interesting, but overall, I enjoyed the content like it was enough for me simply due to the fact that the cutscenes hit so hard it's a shame this content didn't come out sooner though it does feel like it was supposed to come out years ago before blizzard made these weird drastic changes with the franchise however better late than ever you know um but yeah i enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to the next story missions to find out what happens so what do you all think let me know i hope you enjoyed this style of video and i'll see you in the next one like and sub and take care